We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, I am so incredibly excited for today's conversation. I've been looking forward to this conversation for so incredibly long. It's a conversation that needs to be had, especially during this time. Um, so I kind of want to just introduce everybody and then we can get into it. Um, so first off, we have the incredible writer, Bramalyn Mohammed, who's best known for Scandal and recently Little Fires Everywhere. And it's just been like such a pleasure, honestly, to work with you and to honestly just see you as a Black woman writer in this industry who's like thriving and killing it all around has been so incredibly inspiring to see. So I'm so excited and honored to have you a part of this conversation. Um, next, we have the amazing Storm Reed, who is an actress best known for her roles in When They See Us, A Wrinkle in Time, Euphoria, and you're killing it right now with your production company and also with your work through Be Amazing, like your whole, you're just so dope. And I'm honestly just so honored to know you and to have you a part of today's conversation. And then we also have the amazing Ryan Destiny. I've been following your work since Star. You're grownish now. You've just been killing it. I'm just so proud of everything that you've accomplished. Like I said, it's an honor yet again to have you a part of today's conversation. It's going to be so dope. Um, so usually I love to start off these conversations by asking everyone, how are you doing? Because there's so much happening between the pandemic, the Black Lives Matter movement, and it's really easy to kind of get lost in everything and to almost lose yourself. Um, and all of you all have been using your platforms and your voices to speak up about these injustices happening. So I just kind of want to throw it over to you all. How are you doing? It, it's been a lot. You know, I think, I think not only just the anxiety, like kind of there's like a first wave of anxiety for me at least, like as far as, you know, what's gonna happen, what does this mean, everything's shutting down, but then there's been at least for me a second wave of, okay, when is this gonna end? What's gonna happen? Is this gonna be our life for the next, you know, year or so uh, in addition to, you know, George Floyd and all the events um, that happened in Minneapolis. Um, but again, I mean, that, I think what at least, like I said, for me, what at least has been somewhat hopeful is that I feel like the conversation has changed um, versus when you think about all the other uh, police shootings, I do feel like there has been a little more care to action and people listening and trying to at least make some changes. Um, so I, I, think, I think I'm hoping that out of all of this, there will be some hope that happens and I'm just trying to not uh, you know, I'm trying to have just one glass of wine tonight <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and just, you know, to make sure I'm being honest with myself with, about my feelings and yeah. uh, not feel guilty or feel mm. about my feelings away, you know. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like, I think the awareness has been like heightened and just different mm -hmm. this go around, you know, so I, that is what makes me hopeful and what makes me feel like a bit more positive about everything that's going on. Um, I think we as a community, us as Black people, I think this is the most I've seen us come together as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just trying to look at things like that versus like the negative. Obviously, there's a lot of negatives right now yeah. happening and it's hard not to, you know, dwell on those things, especially when we're like, trapped in our houses. But um, yeah, I, I think, you know, also having conversations like this, you know, just, you know, just talking about it and, you know, letting our feelings out about it and, you know, hopefully getting others aware as well. So. Yeah. I mean, to piggyback off of what those two beautiful ladies just said, um, I'm doing the best that I can. Um, I think I'm just taking it one day at a time. My emotions are like this. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm so grateful to still be here. I'm so grateful to be healthy and, and have the means to have a, a roof over my head. Just the small things. Like, I'm so grateful to be, you know, present um, and, and be able to have a platform to 
I guess, say what I want to say and, and try to inform and empower uh, young, young people specifically, but all people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to be cognizant like that there are people in this world that are hurting, they're in pain, that they are suffering. So I never want to, I feel like I have very privileged problems. Um, so I never want to neglect how the rest of the world may be feeling. Um, but I also, um, am accepting the times where I'm laughing and there's joy in my house and um, the things that are going on in, in my career, like I have to be grateful and thankful for that. So it's just a balance for me right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I also just kind of wanted to circle back on what Ramla was talking about, about like just the conversations that have sparked since this movement kind of has erupted in the past couple of months and how during this time, like everyone is kind of paying attention almost because we're forced to, you know, we're in the house, everyone's like actually taking this time to educate themselves, actually taking this time to truly pay, to like truly pay attention to the systematic racism that's in this country. And I don't necessarily know if people have been blind to it or if they've kind of just chosen to ignore it but like now we're all in a position where you kind of can't ignore it like it's right in our faces um but something that's been so cool to see is hollywood and how they've kind of like come together or just how hollywood has kind of in a way like started speaking up ab about all these issues and like really has been moving forward of trying to you know have these conversations um i am with caa i know storm is as well and so they've been like hosting <laughs> right <laughs> they've been hosting these amplified conversations where they bring on you know the leaders of the black lives matter movement to educate and to talk about future plans and so just like seeing honestly, production companies, these studios, like actually dedicating their platforms to wanting to tell these stories and these narratives have been so cool to see and Hollywood has, you know, really been paying attention like no other. So with that, many black actors have been speaking out about their experiences on set. Um, and so, you know, with Twitter right now, like social media has been like the major key to everything, but with Twitter, especially like they've been kind of airing everything out in a good way. Um, and so, Ryan, I read your letter to black women, to young black women in Hollywood, and it was so incredibly moving. I wish that I had that letter when I was first going into the industry. And, you know, you touched on everything from, you know, microaggressions, colorism, discrimination, racism, even from our own people on set sometimes and the importance of speaking up for yourself. So I kind of just want to ask you what compelled you to write that letter. And then I wanna also open it up um, to the panel. Can you identify with what Ryan was talking about? Um, yeah, I mean, really what sparked it was like you said, there's been a lot of discussions mm -hmm. on Twitter, people just like laying it out. And <laughs> the people that did that was Samantha Ware um, talking about her experience on Glee. Mm -hmm. And then Amber Riley kind of piggybacked off of that and you know, I kind of co-signed it as well. So then she DM me, then texted me and, you know, just kind of encouraged me to, you know, speak out about what I was saying, but do it in my own pace and on my own time. You know, she wasn't like <laughs> forcing the issue, but, you know, just letting me know that she was there for me. She understood me. And that alone was just like what I feel like I'd been needing for like years of being on the set that I was on, you know? It was just like needing somebody to understand where I was coming from to validate the feelings that I felt and knowing that they weren't wrong because I think that that's where things can get weird and you can feel lonely is because, you know, you do feel like you're the only one that's feeling it because nobody else is talking about it, you know? Even though other people are feeling it too. So that's really what inspired it, just that feeling alone of, you know, not wanting others to feel how I felt in those situations and, you know, not having a voice and also feeling like if I say this, then I could lose everything right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just got so sick of that feeling and sick of that narrative that, you know, that we have as a black community community as a whole. And I just think we're taught that even within our families, like we're taught to sort of, you know, stay quiet and pick our battles and you know just just do these things that are just basically letting people disrespect you and mm -hmm. i just was very very over it 
And mm -hmm. I wanted to not only feel liberated, but also, like I said, really just hopefully let it spark something in someone else to feel like they can talk about these things and speak about these things when it's happening to them on these sets because it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's just really, really important for us to now start to, you know, just have these open conversations about it. And I, I, I even think that people that I used to look up to and still do, but used to look up to that have been in the business for a long time would give me advice that wasn't anything like this. It was saying basically to be quiet for as long as however, you know, for you to get over this hump. And it's, you know, something that we have to get past. And, you know, either way, whether you're grateful for the opportunity that you have at that moment, it's still not any reason for you to feel disrespected or unprotected on sets. So mm -hmm. that's really where it all came from. I feel like I just rambled on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes, that's that's where it all stemmed from, so. Yeah, and I mean, what you said about like this narrative that we're like supposed to just kind of sit back and take it, um, because the, not even in the industry, that's always, you know, been the narrative of black women. Like we always show up for everyone else, but when it's time to pull up for us, no one is really pulling up for us. Um, yeah. And if something is happening, if an injustice is happening, you know, we just have to kind of sit back and take it and be silent or else, you know, it's on us, you know, we immediately become the angry black woman or, you know, we're, we're the problem, we're the troublemakers. Um, and so, like I said earlier, I kind of wanted to throw it back to Storm and Miss Romola. Have you all, you know, had any experience with what Ryan is talking about? Um, for me, I would say yes. I feel like, I, the point that you just made is like not just in our industry it's mm -hmm. just us existing as black women where yeah. we are expected to conform we are expected to make ourselves smaller than what we are mm -hmm. um so i feel like i can experience that on a day-to-day -day basis like you just walk to the store and you feel small because people are looking at you a certain way mm -hmm. um but on set specifically or being in this industry specifically i would say yes um and no thankfully i've had i i have a a beautiful support system that has lifted me up i have um miss ava miss oprah i have zendaya to like pour into me and say don't make yourself smaller like we've been through these same things so I need you as a young black girl to represent all the other young black girls that look up to you to like use your voice and, and take risk and don't try to conform. So I, I think that has really been pushing me to, to not um, make myself smaller, if that makes sense. But there's definitely times on set where you feel like you don't deserve to be in that space or you don't deserve to take up space because it could be, I don't like to use this terminology, but it could be somebody that is on the same level as you or on a higher level than you. But since they are a, a, a different race, they get treated better. It doesn't matter to some people on sets or, or like are in those environments. So, of course, that's disheartening. But um, I just try to go in with a positive attitude. If I need to speak up for myself, then I will. Um, and there will be conversations had because there have been conversations like that. Um, and even though I'm a child, you're not gonna treat me crazy because I am here for a reason. Like I am destined to be in this position. So you're gonna treat me like that. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm rambling too, but I, I would say yes and no. Like. I have dealt with it, but I know how to deal with it and I know how to react. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Miss mm -hmm. Ramala. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with Storm. I, um, it, it, is, it is a yes and no. I do think that one thing I learned early on by working for Shonda Rhimes and, you know, like a, a black woman who has power, I did learn the value of that and, mm -hmm. and kind of the, the BS that you kind of avoid a little yeah. bit by working, um, working for someone who is a black woman who has that understanding. Um, and similarly, even, you know, working on Little Fires with Carrie Washington and like having a diverse uh, 
group of, and, and just women too, because I think that's the thing about being a black woman. You're not just black, you're also a woman. So you have, you know, you have all, it's a male dominated industry as well. So you're dealing with, with all that um, too. So I think, I think for me, a lot of it has been, um, when I think about like the projects that I want to do moving forward, um, I really do think of who, who's at the helm of these projects, like how diverse is it? Is there another black woman? Am I going to have to be the mm -hmm. sole voice of, of black women? And then, you know, same thing, you know, Little Fires with, you know, Lexi and Carrie, like I, it was important to me to be on set and to have these the actors be able to talk to a black woman, um, you know, if there's a concern or the way something's portrayed, because as a writer, that's the last thing that I want. I don't want anyone to be uncomfortable. Um, but I also, again, I, I think it's important to know what you're putting out there for people because the images that um, that people see are the way that they judge us or view us or maybe even kill us, you know? Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I do feel like um, it, it really starts from the top down. And I think that I'm hoping that like, like we talked about in this wave of change that people aren't just, you know, put, not just putting people of color and black people in front of the screen, but also behind the scenes, because it's important mm -hmm. for both of us, for you guys to feel like there's someone else who looks like you, who has the power to speak up for you if you don't have that power. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that, that's the thing too. Like, I think that the foundation of everything is so important. Like, mm -hmm. and I don't, you know, I don't know if a lot of people, because I know entering the show that I was on, on Star, I was younger and, you know, it was like my first bigger thing. So, you know, just my thought process, like overall on the whole thing, I think was just like very premature and a lot of things that would happen and a lot of things that was said to me, just I it just kind of flew over my head like it, it wasn't a problem but in reality it's a huge huge problem you know whatever would be said to me big or small so um yeah just the foundation of it all is just so so important and I think that recognizing those things early on and knowing what project you're about to step into is so so important and you know who's behind these projects and what they believe as well, black or whatever else, you know, because there are a lot of black people in the industry too that aren't exactly on your side all the time as well, like you think they should be. So um, yeah, it's just understanding all that. It's very, very important before you go into something for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I, something that Storm said about like taking up space that like really stood out to me because um, a lot of times, you know, I hear or even sometimes I'll repeat the phrase, you know, Miss Carrie or Miss Reese, you know, taught me how to unapologetically take up space as a young black actress, but it's really digging deep and like knowing what does that exactly mean, um, because it can mean very different things. Taking up space can easily just, you know, walking on set with a certain confidence or it could also be you know not feeling afraid to speak up about different ideas that you have so i would love for you to kind of just elaborate on what taking up space means to you yeah for me uh taking up space is walking into any space whether that be an oscar party whether that be in the grocery store whether that be the mall wherever i am walking into that space knowing that I belong there mm. and nobody can shake me nobody can shake my spirit to make me feel like I don't deserve to be there whether they think I deserve to be there or not that's their problem but I know like I said before I'm destined to be wherever I am I'm destined to be in that space I wasn't I wasn't I I, I guess I would say I wasn't brought to this space or I'm not in this environment if I wasn't supposed to be. So I'm going to walk in with as much confidence as I want with a, a smile on my face and, and know that I, I've i worked really hard to be in the spaces that I, I, I am in and that I will continue to be in. Um, and if you don't believe I deserve to be in the environment, then maybe you should leave because I'm staying and I'll be here for a while. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's awesome. I love and that. I, yeah, that was, that was great. <laughs> Help us. 
We help them. Compassion is ingrained in love. That's the answer. But we answer to the opposite direction of the cause. Black bodies, they don't care. Start. That's where change gotta start.